Hello! In this video, I'm going to show a couple of life hacks on how to work with a double-handed sword in Cascadeur. I've downloaded this 3D model of a sword. You can use any 3D model in the FBX or DAE format. In Cascadeur, I'm going to add the sword to a scene with a character. To do that, go to Rig Mode first, go to File, Import, FBX, Add Model, and choose your file. There might be different nuances to different models. We have most of them covered in a separate tutorial. I'll put a link in the description. In this case, the weapon is clearly way out of scale. Besides, this model is just a mesh, without any joints. And this sword seems to be called Bottom Thing. So, in order to have better control over the bottom thing, it needs a joint skeleton, which I'm gonna make. And if your model already has one, you can skip this step. So, I'm gonna go to Commands, Add Joint, and then align this joint with the mesh of the sword. In the case of swords, it is best to place the main joint between the handle and the blade. It will allow for a better placement of the controllers. I will rename the joint and then make the sword mesh the child of this joint. And as you can see now, the joint controls the mesh. You can't skin meshes in Cascadeur at the moment, but in this particular example, we can do without skinning. Let's create another joint just to make things more convenient. You can select the joint that we already have and duplicate it by going to Commands, Copy Paste Objects, Duplicate Object. Now let's move this joint to the tip of the blade. I will rename it and make it the child of the first joint as well. Now let's scale down the sword. To do that, select the first joint and change its local scale in the Transform tab in the Object Properties. I'm just going to eyeball it and I will start by changing the Y value. So we could quickly get the idea of the length of the sword. I'm sorry, of the bottom thing. And then just copy the same value into X and Z. It looks good. By the way, you can press S at any time to get in the view mode and see the scene without any extra objects. But let's go back into the rig in view mode. Now let's make the rig controllers for the sword. You can use the quick rigging tool to create them by simply dragging the joints onto the character's weapon slot. I will also disable this option here so that the quick rigging tool would not replace the existing rig elements. And click Add Rig Elements. And if you get this error, that will likely mean that the joints that we created have not been added into rig info of the current scene. So let's fix that. Go back into the animation mode. Then in the outliner, locate rig info and select it. Then shift select the joints that you want to add to it. Go to commands, rig info, add joints. Now let's go back into the rig mode. And although we can see the joints, the mesh of the sword is not visible. That's because by default, the meshes that are not skinned to the joints are hidden. But you can select the mesh in the outliner and in the object properties under basic, change its visibility settings. But that's just for the convenience of the rigging process really. But now I'll try to use the quick rigging tool again to add the rig elements. All the settings have been already set up and it works now. Looks good. However, I'd like to add a couple more things to it. For example, align the additional controller with the handle of the sword. To do that, select the main point controller and copy its position. Then paste it onto the additional controller and then just drag it to the side. It would have been handy to have a point on the other side as well. To create additional point controllers, select the rigid body and under additional actions, add point controller. And then same way, just drag it to the other side. I will create yet another point and move it to the end of the handle. Now we can also edit the rigid body 
that will determine the sword's physics behavior. Those blue ellipsoids are the rigid bodies. They are used to calculate the center of mass. Right now, the sword's center of mass is somewhere roughly in the middle of this ellipsoid. However, the real sword's center of mass is specifically moved towards the handle, which makes wielding of the sword more convenient. So to adjust the center of mass, I can simply move the rigid body. However, if I just select it and start moving it, it will also move the point controllers. And we don't want that. So let me show you how to select the rigid body only. To do that, in the outliner, make sure that Show Prototypes Inner Objects is on. Now we can see all the elements this rig consists of, and we can select them separately. And thus selecting the rigid body this way will allow me to move it around without affecting the rest of the controllers. So let's move the rigid body closer to the handle. I can also adjust the shape of this rigid body in the Rigid Body View tab. Just select the parameter and use your mouse wheel to adjust the value. No need to worry if the rigid body does not match the shape of the mesh. So it's not like a collision capsule. It's only there to affect the physics calculations of the center of mass. You can change the object's mass in the physics settings tab. By default, every rigid body you create weighs one kilogram. And since the sword now is a part of the character's rig, you can see how adjusting its weight value affects the position of the character's center of mass. And if the sword weighs more than the character does, say 200 kilograms, the center of mass will shift all the way towards the sword. But we'll keep it real, shall we? So I guess the rig is pretty much complete now. So we can go back into the animation mode and I'll show you a couple of tricks of how to animate a two-handed weapon. So here we have a sword with all of the rig controllers. Starting from the Cascadeur version 2024.1, the weapon controllers are also displayed in the auto-posing mode. So the way you would work with weapons in the previous versions would be slightly different. But as the software keeps developing and improving, I will be showing you the most current workflow. So, you can select any point of the sword and move it around. However, it is not the most convenient way. To select all the points of the sword, just double-click the main point. And this way you can move the sword as a whole object. It actually works the same as in point controller mode which might come in handy as not all the controllers are currently displayed in the auto-posing mode, as for example this point at the end of the handle. There's also some nuances to the ways you can control the sword, for example which point determines the rotation, as the one that we created manually does not rotate it. So the point that we created is by default called self point, but the one that we use to adjust the rotation is called additional point and it is the point which was created automatically. For example, other points you can use as pivots, in case you might need to rotate the sword around them. Now, the way we rigged it, the sword is also a part of the character's hand. However, if you only move the point of the arm, the sword will not follow. But if you double-click the hand point, you will select all the points of the hand and of the weapon and you can move them simultaneously. But first, let's place the weapon into the character's arm. So once the character is holding the weapon, the best way is to move the main point of the arm with all the other points selected. Don't forget that you can always right-click any point to change the pivot. To move the hand along the handle, select the point of the arm and right-click the main point of the weapon to set the pivot. Now make sure you're in the local mode. This will allow you to move the hand along the handle. And the same way you can also rotate it around the handle. Just like that. But now let's use both hands. 
We can use the very same methods as we did with one hand. Just double click the main point of the hand to select all the points, then hold shift and double click the main point of the other hand. This way you can control both hands and the weapon at the same time. But oftentimes you would want to control the sword by moving the tip of the blade. However, if you do that, the sword might move around too much and fall out of the hands. To prevent it from moving too much, you can lock the main point by pressing R on your keyboard. And to quickly fix the position of the hands, go to the frame where the hands are placed correctly, select all the points of the hands, right click the main point of the weapon to set the pivot, make sure you enable relative to pivot mode in the local space. Then press Ctrl C to copy this position and then paste it in a new frame by pressing Ctrl V. So this way you copy the position of the hands relative to the main point of the sword. To make the selection of the group of the points easier, so you would not have to select them like this every time, you can set up a control picker for various groups of points. Or you can set up selection groups. To do that, select all the points that you need in the group, then hold control and press any number key on your keyboard. And now pressing that number key again will activate that selection. With that being said, you would still be likely to expect the second hand to move along with the first one and the weapon. But that can be achieved with a constraint. So first, let's go to the point controller mode. So here's the way to think about it. We want the second hand to follow the movement of the sword. So we need to locate the sword triangle in the outliner. Just type in triangle in the search bar. So I select Sword 01 Triangle, then Shift select the points of the hand. To set the constraint, go to Commands, Constraint, Points. Now when you select the points of the hand, you will see the Constraint tab in the Object Properties. Here you can enable the constraint. Once enabled, you will see red outlines around the points. And now the hand will move along with the sword. This parameter can be animated and can be set for different keyframes and different interpolation intervals separately. I will use this simple animation with only two keyframes to show how it works. So the character just raises the sword above its head. So first let's set the interpolation for the interval. Good, but I don't like the way the hands move. We can fix that by changing the interpolation for the arms. It's IK by default, but we'll change it to FK. Now the arms seem to be moving correctly, but the sword still isn't. As you can see, we have a separate track for the weapon, and the interpolation there is set to IK by default. Setting it to FK will make the sword follow its parent, which is the right hand. It will always work even when the interpolation for the arms is set to IK. However, the other hand does not follow the sword. This happens because in this scene I haven't yet set up the constraint. So let's quickly do it once again. We go to the point controller mode, search for sword triangle, then shift select the points of the hand, go to commands constraint points. Now select the points of the hand again, then enable the constraint on all the keyframes and intervals where it's needed. So select the required frames on the timeline, make sure that apply on selected interval is on, otherwise it will only apply the changes to a single frame, and enable the constraint. And although we can see that the constraint is now active, the left arm still doesn't behave. The problem here is that the behavior that is determined by the constraint is conflicting with the one which is determined by the interpolation. So let's disable the constraint first. Now let's open up the tracks for the arms and here for the left arm, I will change the interpolation back to IK. 
You can also remove the interpolation for the current track by setting it to step. And although it may seem there is no interpolation on the arm, you still want to enable the constraints on both the keyframes and interpolation intervals. And it works now. The arm seems to be stretching too much. We can see that because the lines between the control points turn red. You may fix that by creating another keyframe in between. So let's make one. So I'll create another keyframe and adjust the pose so that the left hand would not stretch too much. And there you go. Hope you found this tutorial useful. If you have any questions, make sure to check our Discord server. Also, like and subscribe to get notified of the new uploads. And that's it for now. See you in the next one.